everyone, in this video we're going to be looking at the graphing form of an absolute value function. So please remember that the parent equation of an absolute value function is y equals absolute value of x. And this is the shape of the parent graph. Again, I'd like to repeat, this is the parent equation of an absolute value function and this is the shape of the parent graph of an absolute value function. This is called the parent graph or the family of absolute value function because every other absolute value function is a transformation of this parent graph. Meaning, if we get to see a graph that is uh, forming like a letter V, because sometimes this graph can become skinnier, it can become wider, it can open downward, um, it can be, it can move left, right, up or down, but then it resembles, it still resembles the original parent graph. That's why this is called the, the parent graph. Please remember that this point right here is the vertex, or in general term, we call this as the locator point, which is at 0, 0. Now, please um, also remember that the graphing form of an absolute value function is y equals a absolute value of x minus h plus k, where this a, a h and k are parameters while the x and y are the variables so let's add these three sliders here which are the um, parameters a h and k okay now what i'm gonna do now is i will keep the a to one but i will change the h to zero so if i were to change the h to zero and then the k to zero you can see that both these two um, graphs are a match. So pretty much like the um, parent equation of an absolute value function has an a of 1, an h value of 0, and a k value of 0. So pretty much this parent equation that we have here is the most basic equation because our a is 1 and then the h and k are 0. a has two effects on the graph. The first effect is it either makes the graph opens up or opens down. Now the graph opens down if the a is negative. So if we get a negative a, the graph opens downward. Now it's gonna open up if the A is positive. So positive A, it opens up. Negative A, it opens down. Now, if A is 0, our graph is just a straight line. Now, let's have the second effect of A. If the absolute value of A is greater than 0 but less than 1, the graph is wider or the graph is vertically compressed. So now look at this. If the absolute value of A is greater than 0, but less than 1, then it is wider. So as you can see that, it is wider if it's less than 1. Now, if it's exactly 1, then it matches up with the parent graph. So we go on the other side as well. If the absolute value of A is less than 1, so as you can see here, that's, uh, we take the absolute value of zero, negative 0 0.9 is 0 0.9. Then um, we take the absolute value of 0 0.8, that's uh, 0 0.8. So pretty much like if the absolute value of A is greater than 0 but less than 1, then it is wider because if it turns into, if, if the A is 1, then it matches up with the parent graph. So pretty much like if it, the closer the value of a to 0, then the wider the graph is. Again, the closer the value of a to 0, the wider the graph is. Now, if the value of a is 1, then it matches up with a parent graph. Now, if the absolute value of a is greater than 1, then the graph is vertically stretched, meaning it becomes skinnier. So if the value of A is greater than 1, it's going to become skinnier. So as you can see here, the value is greater than 1, and so it becomes skinnier. So pretty much like if the value of A goes farther from 0, 
the skinnier the graph becomes. So as you can see here, that's really skinny right there. Same thing with uh, the ne on the negative side. The farther it goes away from the zero, then the graph becomes skinnier and skinnier. But then again, this is facing downward because um, the A was negative. So, um, but whenever the A gets closer and closer to zero, when it gets, when the value gets closer to zero, then it becomes wider. So as you can see here, it becomes wider and wider until it gets to an actual zero, it becomes a straight line. And then again, once it goes um, away from zero, it becomes um, skinnier and skinnier. Now, let's look at the effect of H. So the H moves the graph left or right. So it depends on the um, value of the H. So if the H is negative, it moves the graph to the left. If H is positive, it translates the graph to the right. Now let's look at the effects of K. K moves the graph up if the K value is positive and it translates the graph down if the k value is negative. So these are the effects of these parameters a, h, and k. That's it. If you found this video helpful, hit like and subscribe for more math videos. See ya!